Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Tex Coakley. I'm gonna continue on with uh, doing some drum stuff. Last video I showed you guys uh, how I go about editing drums, getting them more locked in with the grid. Not completely locked, still has a little bit of loose feel, but you know, anything that's a little bit out, I kind of get squeezed in there a little bit. So, today I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I sample replace in Reaper here using a program called Trigger. Like I said, I'm not afraid to sample replace any of my shells. I record in a pretty small room and my band Opticus, who uh, I mainly write and record and do everything in here in this room with, isn't a huge room, so trying to get some ambience out of it is a, is a difficult thing. I rely heavily on samples and a lot of times I take samples of the actual kit I'm using, uh, blend those and just basically do whatever it takes to get it to a mix level. Uh, before I get going, uh, like I said, I use Reaper. Um, I love the program. It's super tweakable. You can tell it to do whatever you want. And, uh, you know, guys like John Tidy at the Reaper blog, Kenny Joya, uh, Reaper Mania, Mike over at Let's Talk About Reaper. It's another really good channel I just recently found. And, you know, the whole community is great. And so I just wanted to take a minute to talk about those people. And Hopefully I can contribute a little bit, but uh, anyway, let's get going and I'm going to show you guys how I replace my drum shells, the technique I use to kind of use that as a gate as well. So let's jump in and check it out. So looking at the screen here, um, this is a track that uh, my band Opticus is doing and uh, you can find this on all of those streaming platforms. Um, this song is called Imbalanced. I'm going to play a little snippet of it so you kind of know what we're working with and we'll get into it. That's how I tracked it in the room. Starting off with the kick here, below it is two automation lanes. So I got Trigger pulled up here with some samples. And the first thing I do is I go through and I'm basically watching and setting all my parameters. are getting hit and you'll see that little kick right there I, i'm trying to retain all those dynamic velocities so what i'll do is if you look at this track and you see some of these smaller ones i will use the input volume right here if i want to draw right here i can double click right here because i got a mouse modifier that you can put in a four point envelope in and then i can raise this up and basically it'll raise the velocity of this and so when it comes to can basically control the dynamics of how hard or soft I want this hit to be. Um, that's what I do for every hit. So the kick track I generally want, you know, pretty slamming. Those dynamics pretty much stay the same. So let's listen to that. So there's with the trigger on there. The sample on there, and here's without. Okay, now fast forward up here. Let's go to uh, this part right here where these kicks are a little more dynamic. And you'll see down here, like, pink is the input volume, and I just raise that up when I need them to, when I need them to be hit harder. Okay, you can kind of see it there. There's not a whole lot of dynamic in this one, but you'll see on like the snare is a big deal and the tom. So let's move down to the snare track. I'll hide these envelopes. And it's basically set up on every shell the same way. So here's the snare, input volume, and the detail. So let's go back here and kind of listen. Let's solo the snare. I'll take it off. Here's what, here's what we tracked. Okay, yeah, so I remember this part here. With the triggers on here, it sounds like this. That sounds a little machine gunny. If I pull up on the, these are ghost notes in between each hit, and you can do this a few ways. You can separate the ghost notes out and then treat them differently. I chose to leave them like this because I got multiple samples on the snare, so I'll, yeah, so this, this 
is a one shot. So it sounds a little machine gun. You'll see on the graph here that I had to bring the input volume up to catch all these ghost notes. So, okay, you see how that's working there. So now to make that a little more realistic, let's open up the track manager here. So when I do this technique and I go through, I usually take the raw files and I get one track, all the velocities, how I want them. And then I start duplicating that track because it's printed now on the other tracks as well. The automation is, so they'll all behave the same. If I bring this track in down here, let's see this other one in here that I printed. So it starts to take on more of a realistic sound. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, so there's the kick and the snare. Like I said, the snare is really important to go through and let's see what, like right here, there's a little something going on. Let's listen to this here. Yes, yeah, so that ghost drag right there. If we pull this back up and look at that. Yeah, so it'll catch these bigger ones, but I had to lower the detail down and then the input volume up to get those velocities to where I wanted them. Now, if this is down right here and this is down, See, it doesn't catch them right there. So I need to just give them a little more umph. Okay, I still haven't got those. And this is what I do. I go through it. Here we go. So like I said, once I had it like this snare track, then I would uh, copy it down to this one below and then use different samples on it. The blend of these three, this snare track here and this snare track here, and then this uh, BTS snare. These are my close snare mics right here. So those sound like this let's take the room stuff off here so yeah i mean pretty realistic sound. okay so and then the toms are pretty much the same way let's uh see what we got here So this right here, I had to dip it down to catch that transient. And uh, toms are pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. I just go through. Usually what I do is raise this detail all the way up so it won't catch any. It's basically a noise gate until I'm ready to drop it down and catch a hit. You know, I'm going back and forth. I'm turning the effects off, you know, and listening. So that would be a hit. And so I just leave it right here. I'd turn trigger on, look at it, make sure that gonna hit and if it doesn't I would drop that thing down really you see that watch this detail line on trigger I'm down like that so I would go through the whole track finding all these little spots you can see where I've you know here's some hits and they're just real clean dry hits and so what you end up with you can imagine the floors the same way so I'll turn them all on here what you end up with is really clean shells that you can you know eventually I take them up here to this drums crush bus You know, that's a pretty slam track, and I mix that with, here's my whole kit without that. You know, and then we throw the crush in there. It just adds a lot of ambience and a lot of aggression. So yeah, that's how I, I uh, trigger my drum. You know, get this tiny room I got here to sound a little bigger. I'll let you guys listen to a little bit of this track here.
right, guys. That's how I trigger my close mics. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed it. Share it around. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.